Hello and welcome to a lecture for the 16th Annual Kishishko Chair Conference and the 4th Oscar Hiletsky Symposium. This year's virtual conference and speakers will focus on the topic of the Intermarium and Trimarium, Concepts and New Realities. Today's joint virtual symposium is organized by the Institute of World Politics and the Oscar Hiletsky Institute in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the passing away of Professor Oscar Hiletsky. For those who are new, IWP is a graduate school of national security, intelligence, and international affairs. We offer a doctoral program, seven master's degree programs, including two online MAs, and 18 certificates of graduate studies. If you're interested in learning more about us, please feel free to visit us at iwp.edu. On behalf of IWP, I'd like to thank all of our supporters who make IWP events possible. Today, we'll be hearing from IWP professor, Dr. Merrick Hodakiewicz. At IWP, Dr. Hodakiewicz holds the Kosciuszko Chair in Polish Studies and leads IWP's Center for Intermarium Studies. He teaches courses on contemporary politics and diplomacy, geography and strategy, mass murder prevention in failed and failing states, and Russian politics and foreign policy. He also leads directed studies. Dr. Hudikiewicz was formerly an assistant professor of history of the Kosciuszko Chair in Polish Studies at the Miller Center of Public Affairs at the University of Virginia. He also served as a visiting professor of history at the Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. Dr. Hudikiewicz has authored numerous works in both English and Polish. While at the University of Virginia, he edited the Kosciuszko Chair Bulletin Nihil Novi. Dr. Hodikiewicz writes weekly columns for popular Polish press and has published on foreign policy in various venues, including the Journal of World Affairs, the American Spectator, and the National Review Online. He is the author of numerous scholarly monographs and books, including Intermarium, The Land Between the Black and Baltic Seas which is a depiction of the eastern borderlands of the West on the rim of the former Soviet Union. His interests include the post-Soviet zone, the Second World War and its aftermath, Europe in the 19th and 20th century, Western civilizations and its intellectual tradition, extremist movements in history, conspiracy theory and practice, and comparative civilizations. Please welcome Dr. Marek Hodakiewicz. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marek Hodakiewicz. I'm with the Kościuszko Chair of Polish Studies and the Center for Intermarium Studies at the Institute of World Politics in Washington, D.C. I would like to talk today, like everybody else, about the great Oskar Haletsky. Oskar Haletsky was a conservative, Catholic, and anti-communist historian. That is the shortest description I could give you, conservative, Catholic, and anti-communist. Generous, rock-minded, polyglotic, brilliant, of encyclopedic knowledge, a sallow baron of his region, which was the intermarium, the lands between the Black and Baltic Seas, or as he put it himself, the borderlands of Western civilization. This is a very important concept for Oskar Haletsky was arguably the first half of the 20th century, century's greatest champion of the concept of antemurale christianitas, the bulwark of Christendom, which he placed in the intermarium in Poland, the, or Jagiellonia monarchy, and the Commonwealth of Poland and Lithuania in particular. He came from uh, the landed nobility, his coat of arms was Royak, a little wave. His grandfather was Józef Maciej Halecki, a 
a middle-sized land landowner. The Haletskis owned uh, the estate of Bircha, which is near Sanok in the Kraków region, Małopolska or Little Poland, uh, often referred to as Galicia. Like another Polish scholar of a similar caliber, the art historian, brilliant art historian, Countess Karolina Lanz Koroinska, Oskar Halecki was born in Vienna. And like with uh, the Countess Lanz Koroinska, his uh, first language was German. Now, Halecki's father was a Habsburg field marshal, and his mother, a Croatian a noblewoman, Leopoldina. He later married Helena Shar uh, of uh, the Sharwowski family, and their coat of arms was Surima. Initially, uh, Halecki wanted to be a geographer. A summer trip to stay at his family's estate in Bircha and numerous trips to nearby Krakow made him reconsider. He elected to become a um, historian. I have this story from one of his students, General Walter Yaiko. General Yaiko studied at Columbia University, where Halecki became his mentor. Halecki wanted the general, who was then, uh, I think, a captain, to remain in academia, but the general was with military intelligence and he was busy in Vietnam already. Uh, therefore, he declined. And after securing a master's degree in his history under Oscar Halensky's tutelage, he left academia. To return to, to, to return to service, and he would be back uh, in the 1990s uh, once again, so over 30 years later, uh, to um, uh, teach military history and military strategy at the Institute of World Politics, my alma mater, where he in turn became my mentor and praised throughout Professor Wielki Oskar Halecki, great Oskar Halecki, praised him effusively uh, throughout his career at IWP. Uh, another person who had nothing but kind words and admiration uh, as far as um, uh, Oskar Halecki was concerned was another teacher of mine, Professor Joseph Rothschild of Columbia. He was really impressed with Oskar Halecki more. He told me that Halecki essentially sold him uh, on Poland. He uh, imparted the enthusiasm for Poland, in particular the old Commonwealth, but with Professor Rothschild uh, that also concerned interwar. Poland. He was not as generous to, towards, say, Czechoslovakia, but for Joseph Rothschild, Poland was the center of world civilization, which some people considered uh, weird for a German Jewish scholar, but it all made sense for uh, Joseph Rothschild learned about Poland from the great Oscar Halecki. Now, the Polish-Lithuanian state, as described in his seminal history of the Jagiellonian Union, was Halecki's chief specialty. But initially, he started with case studies. He examined sarcophagi and coats of arms. That is also why I've mentioned his pedigree, his coats of arms, and those of the people around him. Yet, he is best remembered by his admirers as the champion of the 
concept of antemurale christianitatis, the bulwark of Christendom. The Polish-Lithuanian state, Poland, located in the middle of the intermarium, took it up on itself to protect it, not only uh, from uh, not only from the onslaught of the Muslims, and Professor Halecki did write a fabulous book on the Varna Crusade, which ended in disaster in 1444, but also against other uh, detractors, enemies of Western civilization, including the Muscovites from the East. Professor Halecki took his Christianity seriously. He was active in the Union of Catholic Writers. He participated in various Catholic international universalist initiatives in Europe. He naturally attended mass regularly and pray, but he was also involved in a number of, uh, uh, of um, activist, Catholic and conservative uh, organizations. Uh, Professor Halecki was a member of Odrodzenie, which was uh, a Christian, a tough Christian, democratic uh, organization. He believed that our civilization was worth saving. He was not narrowly Catholic, he was broad-minded, as I said, because Catholicism is universalist, but he was also a Polish patriot. That is why he elected to study history, a history of um, the crown of Poland, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and, and uh, of the Commonwealth of Poland, Lithuania, when Poland, uh, so to speak, was at, at its peak. While attending the Jagiellonian University, where he got his doctorate. He resolved to stay in academia. Uh, he was not obliged to serve in the military during the First World War on the account of his poor sight, but he became involved and served as much as he could, not just by popularizing history, but also uh, by a uh, volunteering for Poland's nascent uh, diplomatic service. So from 1919, Halecki served his country as a diplomat during uh, the negotiations in Paris following the end of the First, uh, First World War and later at the League of Nations. Uh, he worked at, at one point closely with uh, uh, Professor Handelsmann of the University of Warsaw. That's because while uh, at the Jagiellonian University, where he earned his PhD, he also taught at the University of Warsaw during World War I. Then in the 30s, he returned to full-time teaching. In 1938, he traveled to the United States for a multi-college tour de force, a speaking tour about uh, lecture tour about Polish history. Next, he returned to Europe. He went to Switzerland to teach at the University of Freiburg. Soon after Hitler invaded Poland, Halecki joined the fray as a historian. He, he co-organized the Polish university in exile, and he assisted the Polish gov government in, in exile, eventually escaping uh, the old continent following the collapse of France through Spain and Portugal, both countries friendly uh, to refugees, both 
Christians and Jews, uh, he found himself in New York. And I cannot stress enough, but he benefited from the assistance of the Kosciuszko Foundation. Because the Kosciuszko Foundation facilitated his uh, immigration to uh, the United States. Of course, like almost all other emigres, uh, Oskar Haletsky believed that he would um, be going home. So he, he considered initially at least his stay as temporary. Oskar Haletsky taught at Vassar. This was one of his first schools uh, for a couple of years, but then later uh, uh, he um, concentrated on uh, Catholic universities, in particular Fordham. Fordham was his alma mater. Of course, he went to other places like, say, Loyola, Marymount in Los Angeles. He taught at Columbia for a number of years. That's where he met General Yaiko. His coat of arms was Yelita, or God's entrails. He, he was a force of nature, Oskar Halinski was. One of the most durable institutions that he created and helped to create co-created, co-founded, was uh, Polish uh, Piazza, uh, Polish-American uh, 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 Science and Arts Institution, Polski Institute, uh, uh, Nauki Sztuki, so in New York. Halecki became its chairman after uh, a few years stint by famous Professor Malinowski. And let me tell you, his profile was staunchly Polish, staunchly Catholic, and staunchly anti-communist. There was no Felix Dzerzhinsky inside as um, a, a, a topic of his interest. He thought in broad terms panoramic terms, the bulwark of Christendom, which is exactly what was needed in the United States when America uh, uh, assumed permanently the mantle of the champion of freedom and the leader of the free world against Stalin and the Soviet Union. Oskar uh, uh, Haletsky was a fighting anti-communist. I'll just give you an example. He became involved with a committee that vetted the textbooks, American history textbooks in the state of New York. And he concluded, or the committee concluded, that textbooks were influenced by Marxism, by communism, by Soviet sympathies. So those of you who think that wokeness somehow is a new phenomenon in the United States should consult the findings of Professor Haletsky. He was a red hunter. He defended Western civilization, by which he meant Western Christendom, Latin in particular Christendom and his beloved Catholic Church, and his beloved Poland. Now, Haletsky is largely forgotten, except for a small band of his fans, including me. I obviously mentioned him in my Intermarium, a, a book I wrote about the, blood, the, the uh, region between the Black and Baltic Sea. A, but Others, not so much. His books are essentially out of print. I think in Poland, you can still buy the history of the Jagiellonian Union. 
but uh, in the United States, it's rather difficult uh, to find an unused copy of, uh, say, Borderlands of Western Civilization. So now, in so-called mainstream academia, which is leftist, not surprisingly, Halecki hardly exists. There are exceptions, for instance, a snide footnote in Columbia University's, uh, University's Mark Mazover, Mazover's thin pamphlet on the Balkans. The whole pamphlet, which is lightweight, is an extended polemic against the vision of Halecki. A, uh, the author, Professor Mazower, could not resist and snipe, but snipe at uh, 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 Oscar Halecki. But that's okay. There is no bad press. We shouldn't worry about it. We should cherish, admire, and perhaps reprint it. Maybe Piazza? Although, given its uh, overall civilization will drift away from uh, the concept of ante morale Christianitatis towards postmodernism and uh, 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 identity studies and so forth, it's highly unlikely that we will see a renaissance of Oscar Halecki in this generation. Yet, we shall keep the flame lit and cherish his memory as evidenced by the conference at the Institute of World Politics. If you like what we do, if you'd like to remember Professor Halecki, please don't forget to donate to us and we'll make it worth your while. Thank you very much. I am Marek Hodakiewicz, and everything is just my fault. Bye-bye.